Hello everybody and welcome back to the Programming in the C Language tutorial series. Today we'll be talking about user input, so getting, um, well, input from the user. Um, you guys may have noticed I'm doing a slideshow for this as well, and after watching the last tutorial I figured I, I might do most of my feature tutorials like this in like a slideshow presentation, and I find that it's a lot more interesting and engaging than just watching code on a screen, especially when, you know, I talk a lot about things and sometimes I'm not even writing code and you're just looking at you know, a blank screen pretty much. So this this will make it a lot more interesting and I think it'll help you guys a lot. So I'm going to try and do it this way with these slideshows and they're a lot more fun to do as well. So let's get right into it. So first of all, getting input is useful um, because input and output is what most programs are designed to use. They manipulate it or they utilize the input in some way and they spit out some sort of output usually, right? Um, there's many methods of getting inputs with computers, some of the newer ones, uh, you know, like voice um, voice control and all that kind of stuff, but there's two basic methods of, of input that are very common in, in C programs, or in all programs, and that's keyboard input and file input. Today we're going to be focusing on keyboard input, so we're going to be talking about a new function called scanf, and similar to printf, it's it's for formatted scanning. So the function signature for scanf is int scanf bracket for the arguments, const char star format, and then the dot dot dot. So all of those dots are pointers to things that you want to store. So first let's talk about the return type, right? So we see that it is an int scanf, so it returns an integer. So what it returns is the number of items that it has successfully read. Um, so the first argument contains the format string, right? It's a string with all of the percent codes um, for for input. So you'd have a percent %d or a percent %i for integer, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. But um, yeah, it's going to be what your 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 format string, and then after that, you're going to have pointers to already allocated objects which you want to store the red value to. So first, let's talk about an example from scanf. So Here's a, an example in basic C code. So we're doing an include to include the standard library, and then we're declaring an er a variable called age, and we're um, storing it as an integer, and then we are using scanf with percent %i for reading an integer, and then you see we have an ampersand age. Now that ampersand is very important, you must include that. That ampersand is the address of operators, so you're not actually accessing the variable age, you're accessing the address of variable age, so it's a pointer. And then in under that you're just printing out using formatted printing which we've already covered. Your age is percent %i and then you're using formatted printing so you of course have to have the age parameter and then we're just returning a success code. So we're going to talk about a few um, common percent code formats. There are more and we actually use one later on in the video. But some common ones are percent %d and percent %i, uh, which is an, an integer which can be signed. Um, there is a bit of a difference between percent %d and percent %i. I believe with percent %i you can use hexadecimal output as well by doing a 0x or whatever. With a percent %d I do not believe you can do this. With a percent %f that is a floating point value. Percent %s that is a string. Um, but the problem with percent %s is it stops at the first white space character or at the specified length. Percent %p, which is a pointer, which is a void star type. And percent percent, which is which just literal, like, pr prints out a literal percent sign. It's like an escape sequence, um, similar to a double backslash for printing out one backslash, right, for um, escape codes. So certain percent codes, like I already said, they can take prefixes in front of them. So if you have percent %10s, that will only take 10 characters of the string. This is useful for avoiding buffer overflows. I'm just gonna go ahead and to the debugger. We're gonna we're gonna explore what's going on in the debugger. Alrighty, so we are now going to debug an example program that I wrote just to demonstrate uh, as an example for uh, taking some input from keyboard. So I'm just gonna quickly run through the program before we actually start debugging it. So right at the top here, we're declaring a name, a character array called name, and it's going to hold 51 bytes. So 50 bytes for the name, because most people's name don't go longer than 50 characters, and then one extra byte for the null terminator. Then we also have an integer called age, and we're going to ask the, the user for their name and their age. Okay, so first we're doing a little bit of formatted printing. We're just asking what their na uh, what their name is, and then we're doing formatted scanning. Right, this is what we've been covering today. So scanf, and then right in here, 
we have percent 50 so what that's basically saying is take 50 characters do not take any more than 50 characters because if we if we change this to 51 for example to match what we have up here um, this would be a buffer overflow because we wouldn't have enough space for our null terminator our program would crash and it would be open to exploitation it would hit a segmentation fault so we want to make sure that this number is lower than what we have allocated, right? We could make this like 55 if we want, but we don't need to. We just need to have make sure we have at least one extra byte for the null terminator. That way we don't leave ourselves, uh, our program, vulnerable. Um, and then right after that, this is kind of a weird expression, but this is basically saying go until you find a new line character, because if we didn't have this, uh, you know, if we just had that, um, it would, uh, it wouldn't, allow spaces because as soon as you put in a white space character it would stop reading there so if you put in your first name space last name it wouldn't read the last name at all so we're saying don't stop at a space but instead stop at a new line character right backslash n and then we're doing a little bit more formatted printing we're just printing out what the name is it would just insert it and then we're asking how old they are and we're doing another scan f and this is with percent d right so we're just scanning um, the age into the integer age and then we're just putting it all together and printing it all out. So let's go ahead and debug this. So the first thing I'm going to do is set a few breakpoints. So I'm going to set a breakpoint right under this scanf and right under this scanf. Breakpoints are very useful because they allow it when you're debugging. It'll stop the program on that instruction um, so that you can see what's going on. So I'm going to take a look at the variables right after we've put them in, right, to make sure they're changed. So I'm going to go into debug. And I'm going to go into debugging windows and hit watches, um, which should already open. And then I'm going to go ahead and start up the debugger. So, right here. So watches, and then there's our program. So this watches window will basically show us the variables as they are changed in real time, which is really helpful and really cool, um, which is why debugging is so useful. It allows you to see things while your program is running, and it's good for catching runtime errors and all that kind of stuff. So what is your name? So I'm just going to put in Jack Hill. I don't know, kind of a weird name, but whatever. So look at the watches window. This is amazing. So in the function arguments, uh, we don't really care about these, but this is just the arguments that are passed to main, uh, right? Locals, this is what we care about. So let me just minimize that because we don't care about those. So name, look at this. Jack Hill is right there, right? We just put that in, right? And then after that, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, you guys don't really need to care about. Basically, that backslash 000 right there, you know, that is a null terminator. And then everything after that is just memory that we haven't used, right? It's Because we allocated 50 bytes to the name array. Um, but Jack Hill does not take 50 bytes, right? It's not that long of a name. So all of these are just bytes that, that we can use that we're not using right now basically that's they're not being they're not initialized yet and then age similarly it's not initialized so that's this weird random number um well not really random but it, it's it, you know to to us it doesn't really make any sense so if we go ahead and continue and it's going to ask how old we are so if we put in 22 Look at that. Age will change to 22. It's highlighted in red to notify its change, and the name is turned black because it hasn't changed in the last uh, um, in the last continue. And look at that. We can see that age has changed, name has changed, and uh, see that the address of operator pays off. And um, yeah, and if we just go ahead, the program will terminate. So in conclusion, for a typical standard keyboard input, you can use scanf. Ensure that you are using the format flags properly. Um, this is the same way with formatted printing, so don't specify that you are going to, you know, read in an integer by using percent %t or something like that, and, you know, put in a float value or a string or something, or try to store it in that type of data type, because if you don't run into compile errors, you'll run into runtime errors and bugs, and that's bad. So ensure you use them properly. Ensure you're using the proper ones for the proper data type and for arguments ensure that your reference your arguments are references or it's the address of operator to the variables using an ampersand symbol in front not just the variable like we just uh, like we just did in that debugger example I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like below, comment any questions or comments you guys may have had on the video, and subscribe. And in the next video, we will be getting into reading from a file. So I will see you guys then.